Hello everybody, today we are going to look at a game between Michael Adams with the White Pieces 27-22 at the time and Hikaru Nakamura with the Black Pieces 27-83 at the time and This is from the London FIDE Grand Prix Tournament in 2012 Game started off E4, C6, another Karakon, D4, D5 But this time no advanced variation uh, just simply knight d2 d takes e4 knight takes e4 and we transpose into knight c3 lines in the carol Khan. knight g3 bishop g6 h4 h6 and we end up in this main line carol Khan. knight d7 h5 bishop h6 B bishop d3 takes queen takes all theory e6 bishop d2 Knight gf6 and queenside castling. So this is all very well known main uh, stream stuff right here. Queen c7. Um, this is a, a great move in that uh, it just keeps options open uh, for black as far as his castling uh, is concerned. He can castle on the queen side. Black can castle on the king side. All right. Um, also. The queen being on c7 helps uh, black carry out the uh, the move c, uh, c6 to c5 to break down uh, white center at some point. So it's just a, a good a good move in general, uh, which keeps the options open. Knight e4, bishop to e7, king b1. White is doing the same kind of move. This is a common move you see in many Fianchetto positions, whether you're playing the Dragon in the uh, Sicilian, or in this case, the Carol Khan. Normally, uh, when you uh, castle on the queen side, it's good to make that extra move with the king uh, to get the king usually off the uh, that open diagonal. In this case, C1 to H6 uh, diagonal you never know when there might be a, a devastating check down the road and also to uh, protect the a3 uh, excuse me the a2 uh, square from uh, attack and future penetration at some point when the king is still on c1 so it's a good uh, prophylactic move Nakamura played rook d8 all right now we have a little bit more information in the position so now we know for sure uh, Hikaru would not be castling on the queen side. All right. Uh, what can we say about this position? Okay. Obviously, white has more space, but black is super solid, right? This is known as a Carol Slav s structure because you see the same uh, pawn structure in the uh, Slav uh, defenses. And this is the, uh, the main tabia of such positions. So it's a little cramped for black. Okay, so what does that mean? That means black, black's general strategy is usually to try to trade off some pieces to alleviate uh, any cramps in the position, right? He has a pristine uh, pawn structure. Usually, he's like trying to trade down, usually to get to, to some type of uh, ending, okay, where uh, his uh, so solidity with this pawn structure, uh, you know, will carry the day, all right? White with his extra space advantage usually will try to drum up some type of attack in the middle game. Uh, he must be careful not to overextend himself during this attack because uh, a lot of games are won for black in this way where white might end up with double pawns, overextended pawns. Um, many games this pawn on h5 has just been picked up at some point uh, because white's attack has run out of steam and that pawn becomes a uh, vulnerable to attack so uh, Carol Khan is a very provocative opening in that uh, attacking players uh, sometimes tend to overreach and try to blow black off the board or punish black if you will right for uh, playing it so uh, coy uh, in the center and sometimes this strategy backfires um, case in point is the greatest attacker of all time at least you know from some people's consensus not to get into a debate but one of the greatest attacking players of all time uh mikhail tal a former world champion uh did not really have a good record against the uh carol khan the main line carol khan beginning with a uh, four bishop 
uh, at five. Um, so that in itself should tell you um, some of the difficulties um, in just trying to just um, overrun uh, Black's position. All right, Botvinnik used the Carol Khan very effectively uh, against him in the uh, 19. Uh, 61 uh, match all right and his record overall is um, not not too good again against it matter of fact I made an entire video uh, going over uh, a towel's entire career against the uh, Carol Khan uh, Bishop f5 line so uh, maybe I'll post a link to that after this video if not you could just check it out in my uh, playlist so anyway moving on we know now that if white, if black is going to castle, it's going to be on the king side. All right. Knight takes f6. Knight takes f6. And now queen e2. All right. So now that we have the information, or Adams has the information that black is pretty much going to have to castle queen side, now he's prepared to push this g pawn forward open the king side notice how we already have this hook ready on h6 uh, to exploit and so simple plans like rook g1 you know at some point followed by g4 g5 are, are definitely uh in the mix all right c5 and now Later on, Queen B6 uh, will be played inst uh, instead of C5, okay? And perhaps the consensus was that C5 was a little premature in opening up the position at this point. So Queen B6 was a, a, a move chose by one of the great specialists uh, in the Carol Khan, which is uh, Alexei Dreyev. Actually, he's probably... Yeah, he probably is the number one specialist in the world in, in the Carol Khan, now that I think about it. Because he plays the Slav and Carol Khan, which have the similar structure. So, uh, and that's another tip also. If you're trying to trying to cut down on your opening preparation, that's a good thing to do. Play the Carol Khan and the Slav because the pawn structures are, are, the similar, are very similar. But anyway, Dreyev had wound up playing uh, Queen uh, B6. All right. And his idea was after, for instance, bishop c1, queen b5, offering trade of queens. Again, this is this is good for, for black. Not that he's winning, but good as far as it just alleviates the pressure that white could put on in the position. c4, right? White wants to attack. And queen f5, check. The idea is just bringing the, the queen over to fortify on the uh, king side here. Okay, but back to the game. Nakamura at the time played the move c5. D takes c5. Queen takes c5 now. All right. And he could have took with a bishop, um, but I guess Nakamura wanted to make sure the dark squares were covered by keeping the bishop on e7. So, for example, bishop takes c5, knight e5, castle, g4, bishop d4, knight d3, rook d5, rook hg1, rook c8, c3, bishop c5, and g5. And this took place, uh, actually, um, in the game between uh, Z Jun and um, Kachani, all right? And you can see White's idea as far as uh, attacking over on the uh, the uh, queen side over, the king side over there, excuse me. So Bishop, the Bishop on C5 wind up being a little bit exposed uh, there and kicked around. So here Nakamura decides to keep the Bishop, you know, back and plays instead queen takes C5. Knight e5. Now rook d4 was played. <clears throat> f4. Knight 
castles. Okay, so now Nakamura has a simple plan is just to double up now on a D file, right? Which would uh you know put a monkey wrench in uh the attacking plans of of white here, especially after move, you know, for instance like C three. Excuse me, uh bishop E three. And then let's say queen c7. You know, just trading trading off uh, more pieces. And let's say to move like g3. e6. And this would just alleviate a lot of the pressure uh, from black. Uh, on alleviate a lot of the pressure that is on black in the position here. So instead of allowing that doubling on the D file to take place, Adams do a monkey wrench in the position and play C3, hitting the rook. <clears throat> now Nakamura played rook A4, okay, and um, and to me what takes place here is a very important theme in this game, and uh. It's it's this game becomes about the harmony of the pieces. So let's see what happens. So now you have this rook uh, over on a4, and now Adams plays c4. So notice how the rook is cut off. The rook cannot come come back. So the rook is cut off on the queen side now. Okay. Now that the rook is cut off. White is going to improve this bishop right here, okay, by putting it on a good diagonal. And then this rook will have uh, possession over the only open file in the game, okay. Now, the rook on a4 would be fantastic if there was a way for uh, black to create threats against the king over here, all right. If he can't create any threats on the... Uh, queen side of the board then the rook is is has to be considered misplaced so nakamura plays bishop d6 all right again um in the spirit of the carol Khan, he's trying to uh trade down some pieces a little bit all right um if he tries here b5 for instance to try to create you know a disturbance in the force over here in the queen side then you know move like bishop e3 for example Queen c7, b3 hitting the rook again, rook a5, c takes, knight d5, rook d5, ouch, e takes, and rook c1. This is all good for white. All right, nice majority on the uh, queen side, and a4 locks the rook in. All right, so keep that in mind, the harmony of the pieces. So bishop c3 by Adams now. Okay, and this is a good game because contrast and styles. We know Nakamura is a dynamic player, active player, right? Adams is more solid, more in that uh, Kramnik line of play, right? More in that positional line. So we can see that the positional player, you know, is having his way now here. Okay, so here, you know, pieces, look, look at the white pieces. They're beautiful. Right, as opposed to the black pieces where they kind of look haphazardly uh, uh, placed. All right. Knocker trades. Bishop takes e5. F takes e5. Hitting the knight. Knight h7. B3. Rook a6. And now rook d7. Just beautiful uh, play. Okay. Again, notice the harmony of the uh white pieces in contrast to the black pieces knight g5 rook h d1 real easy play by white right even a beginner can find that move rook h d1 rook b8 protecting the pawn and you know that's a move that Nakamura would would hate to do is just protecting the pawn. Obviously, he wants to, you know, crack things open with b5 and, you know, 
make something make something out make lemonade right out of lemons in this situation right with the pieces okay perhaps maybe b5 right away who's the last opportunity but again that bishop uh is haunting in this position bishop d4 hitting the queen again queen c6 c takes b5 queen d7 and then bishop c5 and this rook is attacked this rook is attacked and the queen is attacked at the same time so here naka played rook b8 and now adams trades down as he is totally winning now king h7 queen c2 check this forces g6 rook d7 and now it's just a direct attack on nakamura's king knight f7 queen e2 and the boogeyman is coming king g8 queen f3 queen f8 rook takes b7 queen g7 and king b2 and nakamura resigned so you saw a beautiful uh, positional uh, game uh, played against a, a solid carol Khan, uh by michael adams so i hope you enjoyed that i hope you uh learn something uh, again the main uh thing that you want to take away from this game is the coordination and harmony of your pieces are very uh important in this game you saw uh, nakamura's rook get uh displaced with rook a4 and then the position kind of unraveled uh after that okay so um take that as your lesson on uh, this game again please uh, support my channel click the links below uh, there will be uh, DVDs, of course, and or books. If you like those still, do people still read books nowadays? Um, <laughs> uh, down below. And it's always going to be uh, related uh, to the opening in question. So here we're talking about the Carol Khan. So there will be books and DVDs, uh, you know, related to that. And, of course, a, a donation uh, button. So um, please like and subscribe, all that good stuff, and uh, comment. Uh, below if there's any openings or things you want me to analyze uh, fully or go over let me know i'll see you guys on the next video